This presentation will go over the immunity exemplar of influenza. Here are some simple facts just to review. Yearly, there are upwards of 49,000 people dying from flu or flu-like symptoms, and it is just an estimate. Why do we give vaccines yearly? We have to give the flu vaccine in particular yearly because it changes or mutates. There are certain kinds of flu. Uh, several years ago, they had a bird flu, H1N1, that had been administered along with the yearly flu vaccine that was made at that time. The problem is our vaccines here in the United States are developed based on what happens in Asia. And as the virus mutates, we may, may not be always able to capture it prior to the beginning of administration from our intents and purposes. If you are infected with the flu, you're most likely to pass it to someone else from one day before symptoms start and up to seven days after symptoms develop. Children oftentimes are more infectious than seven days. Symptoms will usually develop in one to four days after you do become infected. In 2014 to 2015, why was the flu vaccine such a big issue and topic? Well, the problem was because it was more widespread and the vaccine that we had created here in the United States to follow what was happening in Asia didn't fight against the flu virus that actually had reached us. People at high risk for flu include those with pre-existing chronic medical conditions such as asthma, diabetes, heart disease, or chronic bronchitis. Anyone can get the flu, even healthy people, and only serious problems related to the flu can happen really at any age. But those who have pre-existing medical conditions are at much higher risk of developing more serious flu-related complications if they are to get sick from the flu virus. We also need to consider the aging population at 65 years or older. And this too poses a factor because they have the higher incidence of chronic medical conditions. Pregnant women and young children are also at risk. Influenza symptoms. Influenza is a contagious respiratory illness caused by flu viruses. Typically, it will cause mild to severe illness and at times can lead to death if it gets severe enough. The flu, however, is different from the cold. It will usually come on suddenly and people who often suffer with the flu and have the flu virus feel most of these symptoms. They include fever or feeling feverish or chilly, a sore throat with a cough, muscle and body aches that are all over, a runny stuffy nose, complaints of headaches, severe fatigue, lethargy, some people will suffer with vomiting and diarrhea, but this is more commonly seen in children than adults. And it is important to note that not all patients suffering with the flu virus will have a fever. Flu severity, is it predictable? The flu is unpredictable and how severe it is can vary widely from one season to the next, depending on many things, including what flu virus is spreading, how much flu vaccine is actually available, when the vaccine is available, and how many people get vaccinated. It also takes into consideration 
how well the flu vaccine we receive here in the United States matches to the flu viruses that actually are causing the illness. Complications. Most people who get the influenza virus will recover in a few days to less than two weeks, but some people can develop alternative complications such as pneumonia, bronchitis, with sinus and ear infections. These can oftentimes lead to life-threatening infectious processes and can ultimately result in death. When we're thinking about the patient populations that we've talked about, complications are more common with people who have pre-existing chronic health problems or medical conditions. For example, people with asthma may experience asthma attacks while they have the flu. People with congestive heart failure may experience worsening of their condition, which is then ultimately triggered by the flu. Flu treatment. Antiviral drugs are the most commonly prescribed drugs given to patients after they've been diagnosed with the flu. And these are either Tamiflu and or Relenza. These are prescription medications and unfortunately are only effective because they're antiviral drugs within two days of the onset of symptoms. They can be started and will be helpful at, to some extent after this time, but most healthcare professionals will only prescribe if it's caught early enough with the symptoms. The flu treatment also will depend on your symptoms. If you have nasal or sinus congestion, they may prescribe a decongestant, which could be over the counter. It could be oral or it could be a nasal spray form. The decongestants will help reduce swelling in any of your nasal passages. However, with nasal spray decongestants, we also need to be concerned with taking them for longer than a few days because if they are used for too long of a time and then suddenly stopped, they can cause rebound symptoms which are worse than prior to the beginning of their symptoms. If you have a runny nose, post-nasal drip, or itchy watery eyes, which typically presents themselves as an allergic reaction, an antihistamine may then be helpful for the flu symptoms. And antihistamines will block the effect of histamine and help relieve such annoying symptoms as sneezing, itching, nasal discharge. Over-the-counter antihistamines often will make people drowsy, whereas to the opposite effect of that, decongestants can actually cause more hyperactivity and will keep patients awake. Decongestants and antihistamines, because the way they are metabolized, we need to be careful and be cautious because they can interact with other drugs that the patients may be taking and they actu actually can aggravate other conditions. You would always want to make sure that you talk to a doctor or pharmacist about which flu symptom treatment is best for you based on the type of symptoms you're struggling with and when the onset of symptoms occurred. Precautionary measures in a hospital setting. So when we think about this, what level of isolation are these patients on? If you have a flu patient or a patient who they think may have the flu virus, you want to make sure you keep these patients on drops of precautions. And ultimately, we're protecting the patient from getting um, more severely ill, and we also want to protect ourselves from the virus. Vaccination. We as healthcare providers need to be proactive in the treatment and care of patients with the utilization of vaccinations. And ultimately, the flu vaccine is the first line of defense against the virus. Once someone is vaccinated, immunity will occur within two weeks of receiving the vaccine. It is recommended that everyone over the age of six months receive a yearly flu vaccine. The flu vaccine can be given in two routes. It can either be given IM 
or it can be given through a nasal mist. Now we need to take precautions to the different types of vaccines that we have. And we will talk about that in the next slide. Injection. It is most commonly recommended that children under the age of two, clients over the age of 50, pregnant patients, anyone with a respiratory issue such as COPD, asthma, or chronic bronchitis, receive the injectable vaccine. It is an inactive virus, so that's why it's more commonly used with children and those pregnant patients, along with those who are already previously suffering with respiratory issues. If children do receive uh, their first flu vaccine, they will need a second booster only after the first time they're administered. And they also will need a booster if they have not received the vaccine prior to the two previous seasons. The nasal spray is an active virus, and we should only be administering the nasal spray to patients between the ages of 2 and 50 with a completely healthy immune system. It is contraindicated for those patients who have had previous allergic reactions to the vaccine itself, any allergies to eggs and chicken, which is in the inclusion exclusion criteria prior to getting the flu vaccine, and if a patient has suffered with Guillain-Barre syndrome. Guillain-Barre syndrome is a neurologic disorder manifesting with paralysis, starting with weakness in your lower extremities and changing into alterations in breathing. 